Hi, I'm Ian and welcome back to Astro Time Traveller. It's just gone 5 p.m. in the evening here in the UK and as you can see behind me the moon is way up in the sky and actually tonight I'm going to try and concentrate on taking a video of the moon using my ASI Air Pro, something I've not done before. I've previously used a DSLR camera attached to my Celestron uh, SE6 but here using the Esprit 120ED with a focal length of uh, 860 millimeters, I should get some good close-ups of the moon. And in fact, I'm gonna be so close, I won't be able to get a full image of the moon in my field of view, but I'll be able to take perhaps sections of the moon and I might be able to even stitch them together and do a mosaic, we'll see how it goes. I think I can also do live stacking, um, so I'll see if that's possible. And then after I've done the moon, I'm gonna move on probably to some galaxies later this evening. But stay tuned and let's see how we get on doing some videoing of the moon. So here's my equipment for tonight. I'm using my Skywatcher Esprit 120 ED telescope, which has a focal length of about 860 millimeters in my setup. And you can see I've got the dew shield extended and the dew straps on. And my guide scope, I'm using the ZWO 280 millimeter guide scope for tonight. And at the back of that, you'll see I've also got the ZWO 120mm as my guide camera. So uh, that will be useful later tonight when I'm doing uh, some more deep sky, but also for tracking earlier. The camera I'm using is the ZWO ASI, uh, ASI 294MC Pro one-shot color camera. And in the front of that, I've actually got a ZWO IR cup filter. And you can see that's all attached to the back of the telescope. And indeed, I've also got the uh, focal corrector on the back of the telescope. Uh, which should get really good round stars when I'm doing some deep sky imaging later tonight. So that's the uh, kind of camera setup. It's not a planetary camera, so we'll see how it goes. And that's all on the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. And you can see I've got the weights pretty much down the, the far end because it's a pretty heavy setup. But it's clear skies tonight, so it's looking okay. I'm also going to be using my electronic automatic focuser, which is uh, the ZWO one and that's all attached, which I did recently, and I'll show a video in the next couple of weeks of how I put that together and how that works. And they're all connected through to my ASI Air Pro, which I have connected onto the telescope. There's a lot of wires, but actually a lot of them are just uh, trapped behind the uh, ASI Air Pro. So we're all kind of set up to go. As I said, this is really, the camera is not really for planetary. So although I'm gonna do the moon, We'll see how it goes. It's not really designed to do that, so the frame rate uh, frame rate collection is not so good. But as you can see, it's a clear evening uh, as we're approaching sunset, and there is the target uh, that we're going to go for today, which will be the moon. And we'll see how we'll we'll do with that. But uh, let's keep our fingers crossed that it stays uh, clear tonight, and we can get some good image images of the moon through the ASI Air Pro. It does look a glorious. Uh, sunset and a glorious evening which we've been quite lucky with in the, the recent days here in the UK. So that's it fully set up. Uh, you can see we're ready to go and uh, there's the target. Um, just zoomed in on that, the uh, the moon and it's uh, I think it's about 84% uh, tonight. So we'll see how that goes and we'll see if we can uh, track it, do some uh, live videoing and then do some live stacking with this setup. Uh, for the first time and see if we get some uh, good results from that. Um, so it looks looking, looking pretty clear. That's a, a nice image of it, even just with my uh, uh, iPhone camera to get a look at that. So here I am on the ASI Air Pro. I've just done polar alignment. I'm just showing this because I got really good polar alignment. I was only 13 seconds out, which uh, for me, that's pretty uh, phenomenal. And I'm very pleased with that indeed. And what I normally do is just run that a couple of times to make sure that uh, sticks and then when I've done that I'll just uh, accept that and move on and it tells me I'm, I'm wonderful as it usually does um, but then we can move on to my normal process is I will then go back to the home position I'll then pick a star and then I'll get focus sorted out but I've already got focus sorted out I am going to just uh, pick a star I'm going to go to Capella to start with because then what I like to do is just make sure I plate solve once we're at a position like that 
And then once it's on uh, something like that and plate solved, it then actually works well when it moves on to the next target. So it'll just slew around or just jumping ahead here. It will find uh, that particular location. It will show me, and there we are. There's Capella pretty much in the center of field. I think I took a couple of shots of it. I did a couple of uh, times to uh, get it centered, and then I'm ready to move on to the moon. So I go into the catalog, I pick the moon and press that, and we'll whiz around there fairly quickly, and I'll jump ahead to show me getting my kind of first image. It doesn't really able to center, so you're going to have to come out of that once it's gone onto the target and just open up the video screen, and there you can see the moon is in front of us. I've got a fairly high um, frame rate there and uh, quite close in on the target. So what you can do is you can change that. So you can zoom out and zoom in on the target, in this case, the moon. But you can also change some of the setups to, uh, to lighten and darken it. And you've got two white balances to play around with. And you can see I'm just moving up and down on that second one to get the color slightly changing to make it a little bit more maybe what uh, it normally looks like. And that's going the other way, just to show you on the top white balance what that could look like. And again, you can use gain and change the gain around, obviously to get more light or less light into the frame. That's going a bit extreme. We'll bring that back and get something that's a bit more uh, normal and the more what the uh, eye can see and what you'd expect. But it just shows you the range that you've got. And again, that's probably particularly uh, appropriate if you're doing very deep sky planets. and. A few days after this, I did actually, uh, early in the evening when I was setting up and waiting for a galaxy to come up, I, I zoomed in on both Uranus and Neptune and got two really good images. I, I took a couple of minutes videoing of each of those and then live stacked them. And they came out pretty good. Um, you could definitely see uh, quite a good shape around both of them. And you can see the blue of Neptune. So here I am now kind of targeted in. I've got, I've already done my, um, earlier my autofocus, so I don't need to do anything really more on that. And now what I can do is kind of move around. So with the arrow keys that you've got, uh, you can move where you want to actually see. And here I've now just pulled out to get a more uh, bigger picture of the moon so I can see what I want to do. And if, using the crosshairs, you can then actually move the moon around within your field of view and using the arrow keys to move the telescope to get it centered as to what you want to do. So I could do a top half and a bottom half and stitch them together, or I could move it around to get a particular part of the moon. And probably what I'm gonna do here is, here you can see I'm just moving across to get uh, just one part of the moon, get that big crater. Once I've got it in the kind of crosshairs, what I can do is then just zoom in and I get a much closer view and there you are. And I think that's pretty good. I think the focus is, it's maybe not quite perfect, but for the first time I'm just testing this, I think that's pretty good. And I can then take a click on the red button, you can take a video of it, and then you can stack it. And again, as I say, I'm not going to get the greatest of uh, pictures because I'm using the 294 MC Pro, which is a, a deep sky camera. It's not really for um, planetary, lunar or solar. But there, I'm taking the image of that. So we'll run that through a bit and then We'll come back and we can equally move on to another one. So I'm just finishing up after a minute, uh, which is gone pretty well. And it's really tracking well, which I'm pleased with. Now what I do is I come back out. So there I was. And now what I can do using the arrow keys is I can move the telescope so I can get the moon in the other side. So I'm going to go across to the other side, which is more actually the south side of the moon. And we'll zoom in and take a picture of that and uh, see what we can do on that side. So you have to get these arrows right because actually the way the telescope set up, the top arrow moves it uh, to the right and the bottom arrow moves it to the left and vice versa on the uh, side arrows. But there we are, we got it across pretty much into the crosshair center. So now I can maybe zoom in and look at that a bit closer. There we go. And then I just want to get the edge of the moon. So I'm just gonna move it, there we go. Just move it a little bit. So now I get the edge because it's quite it's quite uh, effective to see the edge and you get some of the shadows across the craters, etc. So you can see it's um, pretty good sticking into the center of field. It's not really moving hardly at all. It's just the atmospheric uh, conditions that are making it look like it's moving around. So the guiding is going well. The, the lunar tracking using the ASI Air Pro seems to be going pretty well. So I'm happy with that. And now I could take... Uh, 
just changing around some of the gain and some of the white balance to uh, to get the right level that I want to try and take this particular image. Uh, and then once I've done that, I can click on the red button and we can start taking the that image as well. So that's how uh, you can go in to get a close up and I've decided to take the image on that one. Uh, so you can get quite close into the moon, but I think it's probably better if you had a planetary uh, camera. So for, I think the ZWA range, maybe the 178 or the 290, and I'm looking at those and going to choose one of them. Maybe the 290 has a higher frame rate, although the 178 has a, a wider field of view. And if you go into the image management, you can see these are the images that I've taken. And I can press the play button on that, or I can go down the bottom and press the stack button and then it will actually start stacking this image. So I think I took just over a minute of it. Actually, there's the top of the moon, and I'm now stacking the, the top moon piece, and uh, it takes a few seconds to do that, so I'm jumping ahead, but there's the final version, and that I think that looks pretty good. Um, and you can play around with sharpening on the right-hand side. You can make it sharper or, or less sharp. I don't want to make it too distorted, so I'm going to leave it at probably about five. There's the bottom part of the moon again and what I'm going to do is put those two together I'll stitch them together in a second but again once I've got that I could play the video or I can go into stack so if I press on the stack it will start stacking um, this bottom half of the moon as well and then I can put that together with the top half of the moon and come up with an overall picture of the moon which I think uh, will be fairly good using as I say just a, a deep sky camera rather than a planetary camera so that's pretty sharp in focus and I'm fairly happy with that. So if we just kind of move ahead, we can see it's now stacking. It will take a few seconds to do that. And then once it's finished stacking, we'll have the two images, the top half of the moon, and then we'll have the bottom half of the moon. So once I've done that, I'm gonna go into another tool I use to do my mosaics and to pull them together. And we'll see how that works in a second. It's very quick and it's very easy to do. So here I am in Image Composite Editor, which is a Microsoft tool. So if I go down and find where my images are, which I think I've got located under my uh, current videos because I'm doing a moon video, and right over on the right-hand side, um, there's the two moons. For some reason I've got pictures of uh, egg and chips on my, uh, on my picture, but if I peel those up and then if I just highlight those two, um, and then go to the stitch mode, it in seconds, literally in seconds, it stitched the two together. And I think it's done a pretty good job. And you just go through then to do the cropping. So you just bring it in to get the, uh, the background uh, black all round. You can move up at the top and the bottom as well. And I think that does a pretty good job. And then you go into the file save. So I'll save as a TIFF file. Uh, and then what I can do is once I've saved it, I can go into Photoshop and do any final adjustments with it. So what I tend to do is uh, jump into Photoshop and play around with the, the last elements of it. So I'm pretty happy with that. That looks pretty good. So we come into Photoshop. There it is. Um, what I want to do is go into my filter. So if we go into the filter and camera raw filter, uh, I think all of our astrophotography is our favorite uh, element in Photoshop because then we can do a lot playing around. So I can play around with sharpening in here as well. Um, I can do what I like to, to make that too sharp, but I don't want to make it too sharp. I think always be less aggressive on these images. That tends to be the best way. If you're too aggressive, you end up distorting it too much and then it doesn't look as realistic as you might want it to be. So I'm just playing around. And again, it's down to personal choice, what you want to do and how you want it to look. But uh, I think that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy, as I said, given this is the first time I've done it. I've stitched two together. It's using the ASI Air Pro. It's using a deep sky camera, not a planetary camera. But overall, I think the result doesn't look too bad. And I think I'll post this on Astro Bin as well. So if anyone wants to, to look at it there, you can see that under my uh, uh, Astro Time Traveler tag. Um, but I think that looks pretty nice. So hopefully you've seen how to set up the ASI Air Pro, get it onto a planetary target or onto the moon, and then use the video mode to capture either close-ups or distant ones. And obviously with my telescope, I've had to stitch two together to get an overall picture of the moon, but I'm pretty happy with that. I'll spin it around in the final picture you'll see um, to get it more north and south in the traditional shape. But 
hope you've enjoyed that and you've got something from it to use in the future. So I'll leave you with the final image.